Hi, Dave. A little bit of a different looking lineup today with Mookie out. Um, is it just a day for him? And how difficult is it to take that guy out of the lineup? Uh, very difficult. Um, but just given the circumstances, um, we're in this long stretch and he's played every game. There's one DH in there. So I think just to get him off his feet, get a spa day, try to stay away from him and uh, be back in there tomorrow. Then the Sunday day game, and then he'll have another day off. But uh, I like uh, Matt Beatty in there swinging the bat well. Um, Jock's familiar with right field. So the alignment all works well. What type of mentorship and coaching have you noticed from Mookie um, kind of a, as, a, as a player coach? Not trying to take your job, of course, but just kind of as a player coach. I can have all, I, I would take all the help I can get. <laughs> and the more that players are talking baseball, talking to one another, talking about how to get um, all of us better, that's a good thing. Um, I just love communication. And so Mookie is just from that school of just um, asking questions, uh, inserting information, and giving his thoughts, which is always welcome. So I think it's spurring a lot of our other guys to have those same conversations. So um, I, I think it's only healthy. Colorado is in the middle of a bit of a skid um, as far as their record is concerned. But, you know, prior to their recent challenges, they were a pretty formidable ball club. Obviously, we know what San Diego has done. Uh, you guys haven't seen Colorado yet. What challenges do these do they pose in these three games? I, I think the thing is, is the familiarity. And so with, with teams that really know each other really well, um, it's essentially the same core group of players on both sides you kind of can throw out the records um, and it's a very good positional group that we always talk about. Um, they know our pitchers tendencies as we know theirs. Um, but John Grace pitched against us well at times, Freeland as well and Sensatella. So it, it's kind of, again, you throw out the records and you go play and, and any given night they're, they're a very dangerous club. And you look back a week ago and you would say they're one of the hottest teams in baseball. So in this season, it kind of changed, we, changes week to week. What will be the first thing you're looking for when it comes to Walker tonight? I, I think um, obviously there's going to be life to the fastball. Uh, you can always talk about fastball command, but I think that his cutter, his breaking ball, how that, um, how that, how he's commanding that. Because with these guys, you've got to kind of uh, use your entire mix. And you've got to use different locations. You can't exploit one pitch, one location, or else they'll get you. So I think that if Walker can have command of the breaking pitches, and uh, it'll, it'll just open up things much more with the heater. Thank you, Dave. Yep. Next question is from Dave Vasse. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, Dave, uh, hard to believe the trade deadline's just 10 days away. I'm just curious if you've had the same type of conversations with Andrew as you would 10 days away from a trading deadline, or is it less than usual? Considerably less. Um, this is sort of sneak up, sneaking up on me. Um, probably not so much Andrew and his staff, but um, I don't know. I just don't, I don't know if it's the lack of anticipation, uh, the lack of need when you look at our ball club. Uh, but obviously Andrew and the baseball ops guys, they're gonna be kicking tires till the end and seeing if there's anything you know, on the margins that we can get better. Um, I can't sit here, I won't sit here and say what we need or what I think, because I think we're, we're in a good spot. But um, yeah, I, I think that I'm just not ready for it. But, uh, and I just don't know how active teams are gonna be, but it'll be inter interesting. And as far as Mookie goes, the whole package includes being a World Series champion. How much credibility does that carry when you listen to what he has to say and when teammates listen to what he has to say? Um, it certainly adds a feather in his cap and that extra credibility. But, um, you know, there's been a lot of ball players that haven't won a championship that their insight – their uh, insight to making players and the team better has a lot of validity. Um, but obviously, you know, we're, we are pretty close to Mookie in the sense of losing to those guys in the World Series. So, and obviously seeing the back of his baseball card adds to that. Thank you. Yeah. Next question is from Ken Gurnick. Go ahead, Ken. 
Dave, with Pedro Baez, is this a new injury or is this perhaps the reason for the uh, velocity drop all, all, all this year? You know, um, I, I hadn't heard anything about this injury, Ken, until yesterday, so, um, or until two nights ago. So um, I think it's new. Um, I, I don't think that he um, has been 100% physically right for me. Um, injury report says otherwise. Um, so hopefully this could be a good thing in the sense of getting his body back, getting this growing thing taken care of, and – you know, once we get him back, we can ride him throughout the postseason. Thanks. Yeah. Next question from JP Hornstra. Go ahead, JP. Hey, Dave. I wanted to ask you a couple questions. Jake McGee is a guy who's added about a mile plus to his fastball this season. And I'm wondering when you knew what you had, like the 2017 version of McGee, as opposed to the guy we've seen the last two years. You know, I, I thought we, we felt that there was a lot of upside. We've seen him in, in years past, and, and Brandon Gomes and Andrew obviously know him really well. Um, Jake has been obviously pitching really well for us. The uptick in, in uh, miles per hour has obviously been great. Um, Josh Bard and the pitching guys, uh, Connor McGinnis, Mark Pryor, they've been great. They've all kind of – the transition's been really good. And I think that we've done a good job of managing his usage. So when he's out there, he, he feels uh, strong and can, feels really good that he can let it rip. And with Doc batting leadoff today, I'm sure he'd say he's not having the season that he wants to. I'm just wondering from your point of view, is he a guy who kind of responds to being seeing his name in the lineup in the same spot every day, as opposed to being somebody who might benefit from a quote unquote different look lower in the order? Um, no, no, I, I don't, I think that's an easy, easy out. Um, I think that Jock's always been streaky. Um, so I'm not concerned about Jock. Uh, I, I expect him to the other day, put a great swing on the ball. And actually the other night I, I thought he put two, three great swings on the baseball. So I'm not worried about Jock and, uh, I expect him to come out of it soon. Thanks Dave. Yep. Questions from Ron Kavner. Go ahead, Ron. Hey, Dave, uh, sticking with McGee, in your opinion, and we're going to talk to him in a little bit, but is there usually anything a little extra when you play a, a former team as a player? I think so. Um, it's, it's, it's tougher in one sense because he has a lot of friends over there, I'm sure, um, and they know what he does, and he knows those hitters pretty well, I'm sure. Um, but, you know, when you're competing and helping the Dodgers and no longer the Rockies, it's probably different. I don't know if he's ever faced some of those guys, you know, an actual major league game. So um, I'm happy he's on our club and uh, we'll see about getting him in there. You guys uh, talked about the stretcher in the 17 straight game. How are you guys feeling handling this? I mean, it's a, been a lot of travel, a lot of back-to-back -back games. Is there any kind of exhaustion you got to fight at this point? I, I, th I, I don't see it. I, I think, um, We've been pretty good. Our hitting guys have done a great job of managing workload, and uh, you guys don't get to see it, but I think the last three out of five days we haven't hit on the field. Uh, it's been hot here. Seattle was nice, but uh, there was a day we didn't hit, and I just thought – I think that that's good as far as keeping guys off their legs and, and uh, you know, off the field as much as possible. So uh, – and also the DH, using those guys – using the DH to – use guys in and out, giving guys an off day, which we did with Corey, Mookie today, uh, JT this past uh, Sunday, I think has been very beneficial. So I don't see any signs of the 17-day stretch getting to us. Thank you. Yeah. Next question is from Rashawn Haylock. Go ahead. Hey, Skip. Um, when you, you're about to reach the halfway point of the season, um, how have you been able to navigate through this first half? What have been some of the keys to doing that um, that are kind of different from, you know, a full 162? Um, I, I think uh, the first part is the DH. Um, we've had that luxury, so we've been able to kind of use guys in and out, mix and match. Um, as far as the pitching, I think we – there is more of a slow ramp up for the starters and the relievers relievers as far as going back to back managing their uh their usage so um i don't know if it's much more different than we would have in a regular season but those are a couple things that we've been really mindful of thank you yep 
Next question is from Eric. Steven, go ahead, Eric. Hi, Dave. Uh, I was just wondering, um, is there an update on Will Smith and uh, what's sort of next, uh, on, what's next for him? Yeah, so Will took four at-bats today um, at the secondary site and um, felt good. Had a couple hits running down the line. Felt good afterward. He caught. And so today, his day's over. A very positive day. I think he's going to do more of the same tomorrow. And, um, you know, if all goes well, I expect him in the lineup on Sunday. Thanks. We got time for one more. Go ahead, Michael. Hey, Dave. I was doing some research last night on uh, elite pitchers, veteran pitchers who've been in the league over 10 years and allowed over 150 home runs. And Kershaw, Clayton Kershaw finds himself in elite company with, with Justin Verlander, Cole Hamels, Max Scherzer, Zach Greinke, as guys who over 64% of the home runs they allow are solo shots. So I asked him about that, whereas the average pitcher, by the way, is about mid-50s in the same category. So I asked him about that, and he attributed it to being on winning teams and having leads and being on a team like the Dodgers, which is very good and puts him in positions where he's in the lead, and therefore he can be more aggressive with guys when there's nobody on base and then lowering the walks. Do you think it's that simple as just being on a winning team, or is there more to it with these guys on how they're able to limit damage and just allow solo shots and not the big blows? Yeah, I think there's uh, more to it. Um, obviously, you know, I, I don't know all those homers that he's given up that are solo home runs. Um, but I do recall some of them are early in games, and I don't think it really matters the, the, how good the team is. I think that he's obviously given credit to the teams that he's been on. But the truth of the matter is that when you're talking about Granke, Verlander, Kershaw, these guys really – have another gear when it comes to runners in scoring position and making pitches, quality pitches when it matters most. So I think that's probably the biggest uh, separator for me. Thank you.